Let's bring in House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and sir, good morning to you and thank you for coming back morning. to our program today. We got a lot of data, we got a lot of polls, but we'll put that to the side. How do you see this race in the House right now? Will you be the next Speaker of the House in Washington? Well, the goal is to win the majority. And, um, you know, I, I know all what all these polls say. It's still very competitive. I'm, the, I'm on the road every day. I'll be in Virginia today down with Jen Kiggins, who I believe will win. Um, and, yes, Lee, uh, we're going to be up there, too, in Virginia as well. And we're going across the country. But remember in the last election, the polls all said the Democrats would win 15 seats and they lost 14. So you take nothing for granted. The Democrats say they'll keep the majority. So we have to continue to fight for the next 21 days. But the issues are really very important because these Democrat incumbents are the ones who voted for the American Rescue Plan that brought us inflation. Even Steve Ratner, a Democrat advisor to Obama, calls it the original sin of inflation. And then you watch their defund the police, what has happened to crime. You've watched their ability to look the other way, to have a border open that will kill 300 Americans today with fentanyl and again tomorrow. They do not have a record that they can campaign on or they do not have leaders that they can bring into their own districts from President Biden to Nancy Pelosi. That is their challenge. If they run on the record, they're in trouble. But Republicans can run on the commitment to America, that we believe in making an economy that's strong, a nation that is safe, a future that's built on freedom, and a government that's held accountable. We have a plan to turn America around. Um, Minority Leader McCarthy, you, inflation is the number one issue across the board. And you saw that New York Times uh, poll yesterday that showed in, women independents have swung from Democrats at plus 16, I think it was, to Republicans at plus 18. And I think inflation has a lot to do with that. But the White House says that inflation will get worse under Republicans. Listen to Corinne Jean-Pierre here. If President Biden's top domestic priority is inflation, why doesn't he have more to show for it? He's been very clear about making that his number one economic priority. And he has done the work. And he's done the work with congressional Democrats. When you think about the Inflation Reduction Act, Republicans are actually going to make things worse. And Democrats want to do the opposite and make things a little easier. How do you respond to that? Well, she also thanks the border secure. She thanks they always help when gas prices go down, but have nothing to do with making gas prices go up. She's been wrong on every issue. Everybody understands. Even Larry Summers warned the Democrats, a former Democrat Treasury a sec Secretary of Treasury, told him if they passed the American Rescue Plan, that $10 trillion overall that they spent while they were in power brought us inflation. It's the most painful thing you can ever do to a nation. And every American needs to be asked this one question. Could you afford to give up one month of your wages? 95% of Americans will say no, but that's what the Democrats have taken from you. Because one month of your wages is 8.3% of your overall year. Inflation is higher than that. That's why when you go to the store, eggs are higher. You've got milk higher. Your gasoline price is higher. It is the Democrat policies that brought that. That's why in the commitment to America, we will be energy independent that lower your price. We'll take away this runaway spending. We'll make America more productive to curve inflation what the Democrats have brought us. Last question. You're spending money in places a lot of people would not expect. Congressional districts in Oregon, uh, a few in California, a few in Connecticut, uh, one in Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. Yeah. Um, is that a head fake? Or what do you no, see? No, no head fake at all. What do you see that's happening in those districts that we need to understand? I see extraordinary candidates rising up to run that are not about party, but about a country. Alan Fung in Rhode Island. Or you think of Lori Chavez de Reamer in in Oregon, or Mike Eriksson in, in Oregon, or Alex Galato be three different races. Or, or when you look just along the border, it wasn't just Myra Flores wasn't a fluke, she's, she's going to get reelected, or Monica De La Cruz, or Cassie. These are three very strong candidates. You look at where we're spending in California, from um, Duarte to um, Scott down in um, Orange County. You just had Marriott as well. We can win from Rhode Island to California to Oregon to Washington to Iowa. That's because the nation wants to see the individuals that actually have a plan to change this country around. Inflation is hurting everyone. Democrats created it. Defunding of the police have made our streets unsafe. Creating an open border have made our kids a challenge for 300 will die just today. And then you look at there's no accountability in Washington to hold anybody in check. And a 
Department of Justice that goes after parents and call them terrorists simply because they go to their kids' school board meeting, that has all got to change. And that's why when you have a commitment to America, mm -hmm. you actually have a plan for a new direction and a new opportunity. That's in 21 days. We want everyone to go to the polls and have your voice heard. Well, we know you're counting 21 days. We're counting here, too. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. We'll see how this all turns out three weeks Thank to you, go. Sir. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.